Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, today I have a, this is not a top 10 video, and um, I'm doing back to back of these really because uh, I want to talk about a topic that uh, gets very little love because I think when most people hear the word sport fragrance, um, they're thinking about modern sport fragrances. They're not thinking about vintage sport fragrances. Um, and so if you watched my unboxing, you know that I got a couple bottles, three to be exact, of a sport of a flanker, a sport flanker that came out in 85 that is very hard to find. Damn near impossible, actually. It's a true unicorn because it only came out, it only was around for a year or two before the brand discontinued it. Uh, and so it got me thinking I wanted to do a sport uh, video, but I only have three, four, maybe five true sport fragrances. Um, actually, that's not true. I've got one more that I forgot to grab. Let's just grab it on the fly, shall we? Um, okay, here we go. All right, so we're going to do this one on the fly. Uh, so I have five sport fragrance, sport flankers, but um, I, what I decided to do is this is going to be as close to a spring list as I'm ever going to do. Uh, and the whole reason that I call these videos, this is not a top 10, is I could pick 10 of these and I could do a video and I could wait and then tomorrow I could do another video and then the day after I could do another video and I could split this up into four, five, six days of videos. But I want to share the content with you not to, you know, my point on this is not to get views, not to get subscribers or make my YouTube channel blow up. I don't want to be YouTube famous. I don't care about that. But I do want to share my uh, fragrances that I love wearing in the spring and summer with you guys. So I figured I would do a sport uh, list and in that sport list we're going to talk about some fragrances that I also enjoy wearing uh, in the warmer weather. Now, um, so what I did is I saved my favorites to the end. My scent of the day is the very last one because it's my favorite sport fragrance I've ever come across and it dethroned the previous sport fragrance like that. I mean, it was instant, de instant. This is my favorite, hands down, and I wouldn't have ever found it if it wasn't for Rich Mitch. So, thank you, my friend, uh, my fragrance brother from across the pond. So, um, let's get let's get started. We're going to do the real sport flankers at the end. Um, and so, what we're going to do is we're going to start with an Amouage. An Amouage is almost like the last company you would ever think of that would have a sport fragrance and they don't they don't have a true sport fragrance but they do have a discontinued fragrance that came out 19 years ago uh that i usually tend to wear in the warmer weather and look at the dent i put in that bottle um and it's usually warm in texas so this makes sense um this is a fragrance you know what today's just one of those days man um I showed you Reflection Man very quickly, although I could have shown you Reflection Man, but that's not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you CL Man. Look at the dent I put in that bottle. Um, now, CL Man is um, their version of a lavender fragrance, and it has this lavender silver frankincense combination, which is... Um, you get that you get that beautiful Omani Amouage silver frankincense that um, they are so famous for. It's here. It's in the base, but it also has this freshness because there's some spices like cardamom and nutmeg. Uh, there is some floral elements like jasmine and lily of the valley and rose, but there's this peach. So there's this fruitiness. It makes it perfect for spring, spring and summer. I love wearing this fragrance as a change of pace because it has some heft. It has this vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, cedar base. Uh, but then the silver frankincense just shines. The way that they describe this is like a um, like a spring shower. You know, like a warm spring day um, where you get this quick half an hour shower and then it gets back to a beautiful day. That's what they describe this as, and it actually makes perfect sense. So CL, man, although you could go with Reflection as well. The one that I, I guess I had a Freudian slip there, and I was going to show you Reflection, but uh, CL would be my choice 
that's their closest thing to a sport flanker. Now, this is a fragrance that actually does have a sport flanker, but I don't own it. So I'm just going to show you the original because I usually wear it in situations where I would wear the sport flanker of this if I had it. Uh, this is Guerlain's Vetiver. Now, um, this is one of the uh, best masculine fragrances ever created. And by the way, uh, if you don't know, this is one of the most beautiful bottles ever as well because this, these right here, these little lines in the bottle, they represent the different stages in a man's life. And there's a whole article on it you can find if you look on the internet. I've often found it interesting that these two are, um, are you know, uh, grade are have that um, cover over it, and then so it's clear, and then you get two of these with the cover, and then clear, cover, clear, cover. Uh, but you can go read an article on the different stages of a man's life, and this is a very tough bottle to make. This is not a cheap bottle. Uh, it doesn't look all flashy and fancy, but it's just so classic. Um, it has meaning, and the fragrance itself is one of the best masculine fragrances ever created of all time. It's not my favorite to wear um, because it's a very serious, I mean, I would, I would think, I would think of somebody who wore this to be like, you know, an executive, CEO, uh, important person in government, some, something like that. You know, this is not somebody who plays around. You don't, you don't mess with this person. This is somebody you take very seriously. And that's not always my personality. In fact, it's normally not my personality. So I will wear this on warmer days. I do get this very clean. This is one of the cleanest vetivers. Um, along with Creed's original vetiver, I wear these two in the summer. I wear Encre Noir and Encre Noir à l'extrême and stuff like that in the cooler weather. Um, so that is Guerlain's vetiver. Now, one thing I should mention is someone mentioned, hey, you know, you show off a lot of the same bottles in your videos. And I do because I only, I have a limited collection. I'm just one person. I'm not a perfume shop. So I don't have thousands of fragrances. I have a lot but I don't have thousands. So I'm giving you, these are my taste. Everything I show you is my taste, what I love, what I've come to appreciate, that kind of thing. Um, so if you see the same bottles over and over again, um, understand it's, it's for educational purposes, maybe for others who have not seen it over and over again. So, um, you know, I, uh, I do appreciate you guys watching these and I hope I'm continuing to add value. Okay. Next is one that I'll probably get some flack over, but I have to be true to myself. I love wearing this in spring and summer. This is Creed's Aventus. Now, this is a 2014 batch, and I've shown you guys this before, but I'm almost out. I'll be giving this the first wear of the season very soon. Um, this is pineapple, apple, bergamot, blackcurrant, birch, jasmine, patchouli, juniper, ambergris, oak moss, musk, and vanilla. And um, this is a Schifra. This is a fruity Schifra fragrance. Maybe that's why I love it. I love Schifras. Um, but I love how these older bottles had that heavier moss, that moss quality underneath contrasted with the pineapple apple. The older bottles used to have red apple too. Everyone thinks about this green apple. The old bottles used to be red apple. Um, and so, you know, they also used to be much more smoky. The smokier batches of Aventus are very interesting with that birch turned up. And, you know, Queer de Russie, for example, with that birch tar is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Uh, okay, now we're going to do two blue fragrances. One, uh, a cheaper designer, and one is the niche version of a blue fragrance, if you will. Um, the first is Sauvage Parfum. This is my preferred version of Sauvage, although I bought this years ago, and I bought this in 2020. This is a 2020 bottle, and I got it new, um, or maybe like missing one spray or something. And um, this uh, would probably be my blue fragrance of choice if I had to pick one blue designer fragrance. I like the fact that this has this um, lavender, Sichuan, pepper thing going on, big dose of ambroxan, obviously, but not as big as like the EDT. It doesn't shout like the EDT does. It's a little bit more classy. Um, 
with nutmeg, and then this Papua New Guinea Vanilla Absolute, which is an expensive ingredient, uh, Ceylonese Sandalwood, Virginia Cedar, Tonka, and Patchouli, and it feels like, it feels like there is this um, LME that uh, Francois Demachy used in the reformulation of Eau Sauvage Parfum in 2017. The 2012 version of Eau Sauvage Parfum um, used myrrh. The reformulated 2017 version replaced that myrrh with um, uh, Elemy. And it feels like there's Elemy in this as well. It gives off this piney, you know, frankincense-like feel. This lemony frankincense. And I think that's Elemy. It's not listed in the note listing. Um on Parfumo, but uh, it, it feels like he, he uses that note very well. That's one note that he seems to excel at is Elemy and Myrrh. He uses those two notes very well in some of his fragrances. So that's the designer blue fragrance for the warmer weather. The niche fragrance for the warmer weather, the blue fragrance, would be Ombre Supreme by Les Indemodables. Now, this is one of the best amber, pure ambergris fragrances I've ever smelled. It's high, the ambergris percentage in this is very high. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was something insane, like 10% or 20% or something like that. Um, and this is this aldehydic opening with clary sage, Madagascan pink pepper, and Indian cardamom. And then you get this Neroli Moroccan Jasmine Absolute Patchouli Real Ambergris and Immortel. I don't get very much Immortel to my nose. I do get this, um, I've said this before, but imagine you're looking out at the ocean that goes on forever and there's sun sparkling off of the waves that are coming in and somebody dumped some fresh, you know, like a bouquet of very clean white, maybe even like you know, those white, you ever seen those um, uh, Japanese flowers, those very crisp white flowers that, um, um, you know, you, you see in Japanese movies and art and stuff like that. That's kind of what I get mentally. That's the mental image that I get when I, when I smell this fragrance. Flowers floating on a very calm ocean, but there is some you know, movement of the water, obviously, but it's not tumultuous. The sun is shining down and you just get this smell of life, you know, the smell of becoming, of, um, you know, you being a very small piece of a much bigger puzzle. This is a fantastic fragrance. Um, okay, next is going to be a Roja Dove. And this is a discontinued Roja Dove, unfortunately. Um, this is a fragrance called Scandal Porom. Now, this is the Eau de Parfum, which I've shown this before, but uh, this is the Eau de Parfum. This is my preferred version. I have samples of both the Parfum and the... Um, oh, that's good. And the um, Cologne. The um, Parfum Cologne is probably one of the... Um, my most hated line from Roja Dove. The one that I thought was worth grabbing from the Parfum Cologne would be Enigma or Creation E. Everything else I've smelled, I didn't like. I didn't like Vetiver. I didn't like Scandal. I especially didn't like Scandal. Um, but the EDP seemed much better made. This is the older style Roja bottles before he bedazzled the cap and all that good stuff. Um... But I will tell you that uh, for the warmer weather, this is so classy. This is um, this is a fantastic take on like a fougere, um, spicy fougere thing. Almost reminds me a little bit of his take on like Pour Monsieur by Chanel or YSL Pour Homme. But there's more going on. There's depth here, which I don't... You know, YSL Pour Homme has a little bit more depth to it than um, Chanel's Pour Monsieur EDT. I do like the EDP, but um, the EDT falls very flat for me. I'd much rather wear Roja's Scandal. 
Okay, next is another discontinued fragrance from 1991. So the original bottle came out in 80 or 82 or something. Um, and then there was a reformulation. This is the 1991 bottle, and now even this is discontinued. Um, so somebody was telling me, I think it was uh, Le Ego East was telling me that the original bottle had much more going on. It had that um, heavier leather and, and myrrh and oak moss in the base. This feels much fresher. It feels almost like their take on a fougere. Uh, this is a this is called um, Balestra Balestra Porom, and this is the Yo uh, Waruska and Joel version, I believe. There you go, you can see it there. And uh, there's a lot going on here, but you basically get this, um, you know, herbal aromatic opening with juniper and thyme, clove, artemisia, uh, basil. Ber um, bergamot, lavender, geranium, stuff like that. Old school carnation, there's pine in here, there's oak moss, but somehow it all feels very fresh. It feels like this should be worn in the heat, in, in the warmer weather. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do more testing on this and I'll do a full review one day. Okay, next we're gonna do a couple Trussardi fragrances. One um, is a little bit older from 1990, and one's a little bit newer from 2001. The older one is this. This is Trussardi Action Womo. And Action Womo is a beautiful green scent. There's so much green going on here. I mean, it's almost like the color. Look at that teal color of the bottle. That's almost what you get. You get this Artemisia, peppermint, galbanum, coriander, oak moss, very green. Almost still in the 80s, if you will. Um, there is also narrowly cyclamen, lavender, rosemary, amber, moss, musk, tonka, and cedar. It's very um, reminiscent of another fragrance by Panage called Businessman. And, um, you know, it also feels like there's a big dose of musk in both of those fragrances. But it feels very masculine. Feels like it's, it's the, it's really like a demarcation line at the end of an era. You know, the 80s going into the 90s, the early 90s stuff, I love. I've said that before. Heritage, Escada Por Homme, I love that stuff. Um, once you get into the mid 90s, the only fragrances that, you know, really grabbed me were things like Amen. I, I didn't like Aqua de Jo or anything like that. That aquatic stuff with Calone never really did it for me, but this, is like the end of an era. Um, so, something to put on your list. They're not hard to find. There was also a sport flanker of this, which I don't have, but this is still sporty enough to wear in the spring and summer. And then the more modern version, the more modern take on uh, Trussardi's DNA, if you will, something that does harken a little bit towards more of the you know, fresher, easier to wear side of things, but there's so much going on in this fragrance is why I love it, is this. This is Trussardi Python, a Womo. Uh, look, at the, look at the girth on this Python. Um, it is absolutely um, unique. There's nothing like it. Uh, this is 2001, so it is fresh. It it's it's This would be... Um, this would be a case study in how to do a, you know, fresh fragrance without making it blue, without just overdosing Ambroxan in it. Because what, what the perfumer did here, her name is Louise Turner, and I have no clue who she is, by the way, but she made a stunner in Trussard di Uomo. Uh, my bottle is the Scannon bottle, but there's also a Selective Beauty bottle, I believe, that is also supposed to be nice, but I think Scannon is the original one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this is Tree Bark, um, Tea, Olive, you're getting the idea already, right? Weird Cypress Leaves, Bourbon Vetiver, this is a vetiver fragrance, Musk, Teak Wood, and Tonka. And Tonka is just there to add a slight bit of sweetness, not too much, 
Um, it's not sweet. It's not a sweet bomb yet. We're not getting into the one millions and arrows and stuff like that yet. But the notes are so unique. Teak wood, cypress. I love cypress. Tea. So calming. You know, this and Gucci Porom too both have that blue juice and they both have the note of tea, uh, but they get there in completely different ways. But they both get to the same destination, if that makes sense. They get to a very calming, very peaceful. If you wanted to wear something that just puts you in a calming state of mind, you could wear stuff like um, uh, Gucci Porom 2, uh, Trusardi Python, Skywalker from uh, Mont Blanc, that kind of, that kind of vibe. You, you get what I'm saying? Uh, Skywalker has um, bamboo. So there's, there's unique notes in those kind of fragrances. And this fragrance is amazing. There's nothing like it before. There's nothing like it after. At least not to my nose that I've ever discovered. Okay, the other day I wore um, Spice and Wood by Creed, which is a $1,000 fragrance. And I, and I said I wasn't too impressed, and I'm not. Um, I do have this fragrance, which re will remind you of Spice and Wood, but I think this is actually a better fragrance. This is from the house of um, Designer Shake, and it's called Chic Shake Number 70. One of the most beautiful bottles you you'll ever see. I love wearing this in the um, warmer weather. Uh, this is uh, a, Bah a Bahrain house created in Bahrain and uh, this is bergamot clary sage orange lemon jasmine lily of the valley musk patchouli sandalwood vetiver and cedar this is um very close to the spice and wood dna but there's something about spice and wood that just never impressed me it never grabbed me and while this also doesn't i'm not going to say this is the greatest fragrance of all time or anything for some reason i enjoy this a little bit more maybe it's the mixture of the woods and the florals but there's something here that catches my attention it, it makes it a little bit more interesting you can tell the dna is very close and you definitely don't need both um but Chic Shake number 70, both are expensive, but instead of paying $1,000 for the Creed, you can pay a couple hundred bucks for um, the designer Chic. Okay, next, uh, we're going to go to a, another discontinued fragrance. Um, and this came out in 1999. This is Ted by Ted Lapidus. And this is a very interesting take on a fresh fragrance because there's some depth underneath. The 90s were all about freshness. Now we're at the end of the 90s. People were tired of that ultra freshness. So there's citron, lemon. It starts out very fresh, but then it adds some heavier notes. Cinnamon, nutmeg, caraway, tonka, amber, vanilla, white musk. So this could have been on my amber list yesterday, but... Um, I didn't include it because I was trying to include some of the heavier fragrances. This is a little lighter, but it does still have that amber base. It has some heft, some heft to it. You know how I say Tiffany's for men from the 80s has some heft to it. So this is a decade later, uh, but the house of Jacques Bogart, they put out some amazing fragrances from the, from the price. Now you're going to have to pay a little bit more because this one's discontinued, but... Um, you know, uh, Jacques Bogart and Ted Lapidus put out some amazing perfumes. Okay, next we're going to go to a, uh, this version is discontinued. The scent is still available, but the modern scent is not worth it in my opinion. This is Lacoste, the original from 1984. And what you want is you want the bottle that says Sofa Par underneath. S-O-F. IPR right here you don't want the one that says Procter and Gamble um, because this is an oak moss bomb this is a green oak moss bomb if you were gonna go to a country club and play golf this is what you wear um, this is lavender lime bergamot lemon it's very citrusy very fresh very aromatic very green there's basil galbanum carnation geranium clary sage and then the base is just like oak moss oak moss oak moss amber oak moss musk tonka vetiver cedar it is um it is very 
Um, it's, 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 it's very piercing in that oak moss. You know, you really, you really, um, you really can, you really can smell oak moss in a fragrance because it gives off this, uh, almost like I've said before, civet gives off this twang to your nose. Castorium gives off this twang. We'll get to castorium later. Um, oak moss in big doses gives off this twang that, um, uh, just can't be recreated no matter how much how good the synthetics are they could use patchouli and vetiver you can smell real oak moss in a fragrance instantly and um, at least in big doses those old fragrances I talked about the other day like youth do azure by Estee Lauder um, you know those kind of fragrances that used heavy oak moss this is in that category but it's but it's also very green and very fresh um, so something to keep in mind, I would wear this in, in warmer weather, even though it has big doses of oak moss in it. Now, another big oak moss fragrance is this Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. This is a legend. Um, I wish I had the, uh, 125 ml instead of the 75 ml bottle, but I'm happy with this. Um, this, I had to tape the sticker back on because it always falls off. Uh, but this is the, what you want to look for is the one that says Euro Italia on the bottom and made in Italy. And this is a, this is an all time classic. This is so Italian. It is, it just has that Italian pizzazz. It's very fresh, uh, very clean, bergamot, orange, tarragon, cardamom, lavender, sage, pepper. But the base is where this one becomes Hall of Fame material because you get this iris with tobacco and it's very hard to do tobacco in a fresh fragrance because it can be very strong and overtake things. This remains beautifully blended. You can wear this in the hottest of days. Um, there is some woods underneath to balance it. I love this fragrance. I love it for the heat. Uh, spring and summer, I will be wearing the piss out of that. Okay. Now, a couple fragrances that um, deserve a review from me, uh, deserve a comparison video, and I'm gonna do one soon. One is Equipage, and one is Equipage Geranium. Now, I will tell you that this is one of the few cases where I actually prefer the modern juice. Uh, the, the vintage Equipage, to me, has something about it I don't get along with. Um, Guy Robert made this fragrance. By the way, I scored this in my haul from Guy Robert. Dior Essence. Vintage bottle of Dior Essence. On, uh, on Emile's recommendation, I believe. And um, this completely blew me away. This is one of the most beautiful floral chiffre fragrances. Oh my God, it is so good. I wore it to bed yesterday. I was stunned, stunned. I used to think that the um, most influential and the most beautiful creation Guy Robert ever created, because he didn't, he doesn't have a huge portfolio, but he's up there with those old timer classical, you know, perfumers, Edmund Rudnitska, stuff like that. I used to think it was gold by M. Wash, gold woman and gold man. Now, I'm not so sure. This isn't the best thing he ever created. I can't believe more people don't talk about this. This is stunningly good. Shockingly good. Um, in 2009, this was reformulated. This is obviously the, the vintage bottle. I think this is an 80s bottle, but I'm not sure. Um, it was reformulated by Francois Demachy. And um, I hear that that reformulation is, is nowhere near as good as the old stuff. But Dior Essence, um, wow. I used to think Diorella was my favorite from that line. Uh, but Dior, Dior Essence shot up there. Anyways, uh, Guy Robert created the original Equipage. And I have a hard time wearing this. It, it, it um, is one of the few old fragrances that smells old to me, if you will. Uh, it, it, there's just something about it I struggle with. The notes you would think I would love. Um, the spicy, woody thing, just something about it, I just go, eh. Uh, but this, I really like this. Um, this really modernizes it. 
Even though it's simpler, or they don't list as many notes in equipage geranium, um, there's only like geranium, sandalwood, and clove. There's something that's hard to really put your finger on with this. It seems more complex, even though it's simpler. If that makes sense. Um, and that's why it's taken me a while for Jean-Claude Elena to grow on me. Because at first, when my nose was a little bit more green, uh, I would smell stuff like that and go, eh, it's too simple. It's not for me. Uh, I like I like heavier stuff. I like stuff that, you know, transforms more. But there are transformations in this. You just have to really pay attention. It's it's closer to the skin. It um it it's not as loud and in your face. It's 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 his it's John Claude Elena's style, and I'm coming to appreciate that more. Now, a fragrance that I love wearing in the heat, and I think this is one of the classiest. Um, I mentioned the other day I love Carlos Benaim as a perfumer. He did three fragrances that I absolutely adore. He did Polo Green from 1978, uh, which is one of the greatest masculines of all time. I love that scent. It's one of my favorite pine fragrances ever, um, amongst other things in that, obviously. But that green pine and Polo Green with tobacco is just stunning. He also did a fragrance called Music for a While, which I think is one of the best modern fougere fragrances ever, uh, and the best pineapple note ever. And he also did this. This is Dunhill's Icon, the original. Now, Dunhill was a brand that um, really, you know, used to be a little more famous. They came out with their first masculine fragrance in 1934. But the brand itself was founded in 1893, 1893, yes. Um, and they used to, um, you know, sell cigars and tobacco and stuff like that. Um, this fragrance, um, this is one of the best interpretations of Narrowly I've ever smelled. Narrowly is a very expensive note. It's very hard to do well because if you're not careful... It can go dryer sheets. It can go with that dryer sheet, you know, clean musk type smell, which doesn't smell expensive. This manages to mix this pepperiness with lavender. And the lavender and the narrowly absolute just mixes with this note of vetiver. Oh, God. I love this fragrance. And this, this is the reason I don't own Terre de Hermes. Uh, because I consider Terre de Hermes that you know, orange vetiver, dirty orange vetiver. This does the same, this fills the same role for me. And I love wearing this. You get this grapefruit, like this grape soda opening. Oh, it's so good for the spring and summer. This is a, this is a gem. Um, if you only had $50 to spend and that was your entire fragrance budget, and you wanted a summer fragrance, I would tell you to go buy this. Just go buy it. Don't worry about reformulations or versions. Just go buy Dunhill's Icon, the original. Now, all the flankers they're doing are shite. Dunhill Icon racing, blue, green, purple, red. Don't buy any of that stuff, in my opinion. Um, now, a, a um, 30 ml decant that I scored off of somebody for a very, very, very reasonable price Flacons of this are going for thousands, one to four thousand uh, dollars. This is Creed's Selection Vert. I'm very excited about wearing this this year. This is the citrusy, fresh. Uh, came out in 1970, apparently with Creed. Who knows? But uh, that sounds about right. Peppermint with herbs and and Creed citruses. So it smells like there's that, you know, very fresh, peppery citrus at the top with what smells like a very um, either well-done synthetic ambergris or real ambergris in the base of this. This smells so posh, so shiny, so, you know, minty, citrusy, fresh for the warm weather. I can't wait to wear Selection Vert. Give it a full wear. I'm going to wait till it gets really hot. Um, okay, next is a fragrance that's a Dior. And it was created by Olivier Peshot and Olivier Guillotine. Uh, this is Dior's Higher. Now, Higher is often overlooked. 
very often overlooked. It's it's the it's almost like the redheaded stepchild of Dior. And um, this this came out in 2001. So it's 21 years old. And um, this is a this is a fragrance that has pear and pear tree bark, rosemary, cypress. So this is pear, basil, peach, citruses with cypress and musk basically. That's the fragrance. It's very simple, but it's very easy and clean to wear on warm days. Uh, Christo, who was one of the old timers that I love his channel. Um, I still watch some of his old videos sometimes because I just loved his take on it. He was very straightforward and blunt. Reminded me a little bit of me, actually. Um, and he just kind of said what he wants. And if you don't like it, oh well. And he loved this fragrance. He said it's highly underrated. So I bought a 50 ml bottle and I like it. I don't love it because I don't really like summer fresh fragrances. But if you want something fresh, that's one to put on the list. Okay, now this is actually considered a cologne. This is Gucci, Gucci Guilty Cologne. Now, Gucci Guilty Cologne came out by Alberto Morias. I highlighted this in my Alberto Morias um, video. This is this Spanish Cypress with rosemary, juniper, bergamot, violet. Uh, there's a couple synthetic notes in here like heliotropin and a big dose of white musk. But it's paired against this woody base. The woodiness comes from cedar and this patchouli, which doesn't smell like, um, it doesn't smell, don't think you're getting a big patchouli fragrance. You're not. It's just used to give it a little bit of base. So maybe they use some sort of distilled patchouli molecule. I, I don't know. But um, it is an easy to wear summer fragrance, designer-ish. Uh, you can just, you can douse yourself in this stuff. You can lather it on. Um, now, Oh, I love this fragrance. Now, one fragrance I'm glad to have a backup of, and this is discontinued and hard to find, you might have to pay big money for it, is Jill Sanders. Jill Sanders, excuse me, not Sanders. Feeling Man. Or if you look, it'll say Jill Sander Man. My other bottle actually says just Jill Sander Man. Um, but basically, this is a take on Dracar Noir, but I think this is done much better. This is better than Dracar Noir. This is created by Alain Alkenberger uh, when he was with Simrise, I think. But uh, it's anise, tarragon, lavender, cyclamen, balsam fir, orris. The, the twist here is raspberry. There's this beautiful, perfect raspberry note. Um, that mixes with the amber, oak moss, tobacco, tonka, cedar, sandalwood, musk, patchouli. It's amazing. I love wearing this fragrance in the spring and summer. Anytime you can think about wearing Dracar Noir, I always just reach for this, to be honest with you. Um, okay, now I'm going to show you a fragrance that uh, is a classic, 1984. It's still being marketed, but it's not in this bottle. This is the old bottle of Tuscany per Uomo. This is Italian as Italian can get. Uh, the Etruscan portion of Italy, um, bergamot, lavender, lime, lemon, anise, one of the most beautiful anise notes ev ever in all of perfumery here. Anise, tarragon, caraway, it's sharp, and it's piercing. This is this is piercing to me. And sometimes I like fragrances like that. The older bottles have bigger doses of oak moss. Um, you know, that stuff is amped up here. So while I do think if you can hunt down a vintage bottle, it's worth it. Don't pay huge money for it because the new version is quite nice. But if you if you're an oak moss addict like I am, go for the old go for the old bottle with the name on the side. And the star on the bottom, uh, absolutely stunning stuff. Uh, it's it's so just perfect for warm weather. Now, this fragrance actually reminded me of a fragrance I wore. On one hand, I wore Diorella. On the other hand, last night, I wore this to bed. So I wanted to test it. Bowling Green Cologne Spray. Now, the Cologne Spray 
is um, discontinued. So this is back when it was distributed by Jacqueline, Jacqueline Cochran, uh, Jacqueline Cochran. And um, there is something similar, you know, to me, to my nose, something, you know, they're not, they're not exactly the same, of course, they're different, but they came out in close proximity of each other. This came out a couple years after this, and I think I could wear them for the same um, events, but this blew me away. Both of the ones I tested yesterday, last night, blew me away wearing this to bed. Um, I, I think Bowling Green, the EDT, the modern stuff is different and reformulated from this, but you just get this blast of um, fresh freshness, greenness uh, from Bowling Green. I don't have the notes up in front of me, but you can tell there's a big slug of oak moss in the base. I just, I love that stuff. And I will be wearing that in the spring and summer. Okay, we're getting down to the real sport flankers here pretty soon. First, we're going to show you a discontinued Escada. This is called Escada Sentiment. In this bottle with the, uh, in the Tetris piece bottle. Sentiment was created by Dominique Ropion and Laurent, and Laurent Bru, uh, Bruyere. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, Laurent. But uh, this is basically a fresh juniper lime with pimento, pink pepper, and some woods in the base. Sandalwood, cedar, cedar wood, and vetiver. Oh, and then some nutmeg. It's very fresh. It's very easy to wear. You can just lather this on. I picked this bottle up for like 20 bucks. I wouldn't pay more than 25 bucks for this. I mean, it's, it's good, but it's not, it's, it's not Dominique Ropion's best. Now, I will tell you one that you will see probably on Duck's channel pretty soon, too, because he got a mini of this. This is Bally Masculine. This is 100 ml, and I paid pretty good money for this. Um, he got a 10 ml mini, and he got a steal on that, so I'm very glad he was able to pick that up. This fragrance right here, um, this is like a fougere, but it starts out so mid-80s. Think about how some of those 80s fragrances start, like Caron, Caron um, Third Man, or think about how, you know, Bellamy kind of begins, that initial blast. And it almost feels like this is going to go down that path and then it makes a hard right turn and goes fougere. You just get these fern notes, these green notes, the, you know, well, ferns don't have a smell. But you, you get this, um, um, you know, geranium, uh, kumarin, citruses at the top, bergamot. It's beautiful, beautiful to wear in the warmer weather because it stays true to that 80s DNA. I love this stuff. Um, okay, now the sport fragrance that I almost forgot, God forbid, um, is this. This is Polo Sport. Um, and if you're going to buy this fragrance, get the one with the silver atomizer that is distributed by Cosmair. That's what you want. You want Cosmair distribu distribution. Um this is probably my favorite fresh aquatic fragrance because there are aldehydes in the top with citruses, mint, lavender, narrowly. This is actually a pretty complex fragrance. There's cyclamen, rose, rosewood, geranium, ginger, jasmine, seagrass, amber, guyac wood, musk, sandalwood, cedar. For something that just smells so pleasant and so easy to wear in the heat, it's shocking that there's so many uh, notes listed because... They really created this. Harry Fremont created this. And he created, um, this is the smell of basically like junior high and high school for me. This is what all the guys in the locker room wore. Um, this smell really takes me back. Um, and it's so easy to wear. It's, um, it's, it's its own thing. I don't think it's, it's, uh, I think a lot of brands maybe started to try to copy this DNA afterwards, but I think this is this is unique to me in, in some ways. And while it does give off that marine, uh, I don't want to call it an aquatic fragrance because it does have maybe aquatic touches, like seagrass, for example, is an aquatic touch, but it's not 
full-on marine. It's not full-on aquatic, if you will. Um, okay, now this is a sport flanker of a fragrance that is a discontinued classic. This is Eau du Sar. So everyone knows Sar. Sar is like the famous green um, fragrance with just loads of oak moss, you know. 30-40% of the fragrance is probably oak moss. So this is Van Cleef and Arpel's fresher take on Sar. This came out a decade later in 98. This is grapefruit, cardamom, pineapple, melon, lavender, sandalwood, patchouli. You get the gist. The melon, the grapefruit, it's very fresh. It's very citrusy. Um, easy to wear in the summer. This is a, I would call this a sport fragrance, even though it doesn't say sport like polo sport. And then the last three all say sport, and they're some of my favorites, but the last two especially. Oh my God. Um, this is Sport de Paco Rabanne. This is a tester that I picked up years ago with the raised R. Uh, there's also a different version of Sport de Paco Rabanne that, ha that comes in this almost like green juice, if you will. Um, but this, uh, this came out... This was issued by uh, Paco Rabanne Parfums. Um, and Rosendal Matu was the perfumer. Um, and this just takes that Paco Rabanne DNA. Like, my dad wore Paco Rabanne exclusively. And he would wear this uh, in the summer. This would be... He, he could easily wear this in the summer. Because it still stays true to that DNA of, of Paco Rabanne. Um... Okay, last two are my favorites. This was my favorite sport fragrance right here until the, the number one jumped up and just annihilated it. Um, this is called Boss Sport. Now, there's a couple different fragrance um, versions of this bottle. If you go to Parfumo and, and look it up, you will instantly see the one with the red cap that has sport written right here in red. And the tennis rackets are not in a circle like mine are. I don't know which one came first. I can tell you that mine says it's made in Germany. If it'll focus. There you go. And um, I love this stuff. This is green. There's so much going on. And, and again, sport fragrances were uh, very popular in the mid-80s. So this is Artemisia. Bergamot, Juniper, Tagetz, Tarragon, Carnation, Jasmine, Lily, Clary Sage, Rose, Amber, Moss, Musk, Patchouli, Tonka, Cedar, Sandalwood. It's so 80s. It's so perfectly 80s. It's it's green. It's it's heavy for a sport fragrance, but I wear it in in, in the hottest days. Um I mean, look at the look at the bottle. Look at that. Does that not scream 80s, the original Boss Number 1 bottle with green? It keeps the pinstripes. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love this stuff. I can't wear, wait to wear this again. Now my scent of the day. The one that just came in like a bull in a china shop and just went, I'll take the number one spot. This is Antaeus Sport Cologne. Not many people even realize that this fragrance exists. Sport Cologne is a flanker Antaeus put out in 85, 86. It was available and it was discontinued by end of 86, I believe. So it lasted a year, year and a half, two years, boom, it's gone. They, they killed it. So there's very few bottles of this floating around. And that's why in my last haul, you'll notice I bought three because I had to have them. They're, they're that rare that when I heard there were three available, I know they're stored properly. I know they're legit. I'm always scared about buying Chanel's because of the possibility of fakes. And uh, so you can see the batch code right there. Um, and it is... Um, what can I say about this fragrance? It's my scent of the day, and I am loving every single second of wearing this fragrance. I'm in love with this fragrance. Again, this is uh, this is so me. It's perfectly me. It's um, it's 
a little fresh at the at the top. There's artemisia, peppermint. The heart has that rose that Antaeus has, but it's missing the myrrh. That's the biggest difference. If you just want to point out one difference, there's no myrrh here. So the myrrh in the original makes it much more resinous, much thicker. This feels um it it feels like it doesn't have those heavy resins. So they've amped up some of the citruses, the stuff you would expect a sport flanker to do, but they added vetiver in the base. They kept the leather uh, because the leather comes from the castorium and there's a huge dose of castorium and oak moss in this fragrance and patchouli, but castorium especially. And, and the removal of those resinous notes like myrrh almost makes the castorium even more piercing. So it's a beautiful fragrance with bite underneath, and I absolutely adore it. It's going to be in the 80s today in Texas, and I'm rocking Antaeus Sport like it's going out of style. I love this stuff. I'm so glad I have three bottles. I can wear it with reckless abandon. I can spray it on. I can enjoy the castorium. It is like a breath of fresh air in the fragrance world. So, thanks for watching. Um, let me know if there are some sport fragrances that you guys have that I should check out, or summer or spring fragrances, if you want to call them that. Let me know if you have experience with some of these rare or rarer or discontinued ones. Um, if there's any on the list, I should check out. If you're if you're excited about some of the up and coming comparison videos, you know stuff like that. Let me know. Um, or even some of the first impression videos, stuff like that. Let me know what your thoughts are. I love interacting with you guys. Uh, by the way, I put something in the comments the other day in the description that said I wasn't going to put the names of the fragrances in anymore. And then M Michael left me a comment, uh, and it very well thought out. He said, uh, what if the, I, I like the name of the, of the fragrances in there because number one, it makes it easier on me to know what's there. But number two, uh, it'll help the algorithm pick up the fragrances, especially for rare fragrances. If someone searches for Bally Masculine, will this video come up? And I said, wow, it's a good point. So I guess the pros outweigh the cons. I just didn't want people to go in there, look at the list and move on. You know, I wanted them to actually watch the video, not because I want the watch time, but because I don't feel like you can get the gist of what I'm trying to, you know, get across to you guys just by looking at a name of a fragrance and moving on. Um, so that's my thought process. I'm going to put them in still begrudgingly, um, uh, because I think the pros outweigh the cons. Um, but I'm really hoping people watch the video and not just click on it, the description, see the names and move on. So anyways, let me know what your thoughts are on that. I really appreciate you guys watching. Cheers. And I'll see you again next time with another video. Bye-bye.